Erzurum Köşesi programımıza hoş geldiniz. Bu programda e, Mendelssohn'un Mi Minor Keman Konçertosu'nu genç sanatçı Sayaka Soji, Klaus Weise yönetimindeki Bilkent Senfoni Orkestrası ile birlikte gerçekleştirecek. Bu genç sanatçımız hakkında bize ne bilgiler vereceksiniz Işın Hocam? E, Sayaka Soji son yıllarda çok e, ünü artan bir kemancı. E, kendisi çok genç bir sanatçı. Ee, enteresan tarafı e, hem Mendelssohn'un doğumunun 200. yılında yapıldı bu konser, Şubat ayında. Hem e, Shoji'nin e, kullandığı keman e, Mendelssohn'un konçertosunu ilk seslendiren kemancılardan, Joachim'in e, kullandığı kemanlardan biri. Hatta o bir Stradivarius ve ismi var. İsmi de Joachim. E, Tabi e, bu tesadüflerin dışında e, Mendelssohn'un keman konçertosunun da ilk seslendirilişini çok genç kemancılar yapmış. E, Shoji de aynı şekilde hem eserin lirik romantik özelliklerini hem de e, tabii ki eserin içindeki tazeliği, saflığı e, yaşından da e, faydalanarak e, ortaya çıkartıyor. Ben e, Japonları yüz ifadelerinden pek fazla okuyamam. Ama e, bu eseri yorumlarken e, genç Japon sanatçının yüz ifadeleri onun bu eserin ne kadar derinliklerine daldığını, e, hissiyatının e, ne kadar etkili olduğunu e, sergiliyor. Düşünüyorum herhalde evrensel müzik dediklerinde yani Avrupa'da yazılmış ve e, Şimdi dünyanın öbür tarafında, Japonya'da bir genç sanatçı e, bunu benimsemiş ve dünyaya anlatıyor. Yani mahalli müzikle evrensel müzik derken e, aradaki farklardan birini de e, e, çok geniş bir e, e, alanda kabul edilen e, sanat eserleri diye e, özetlesem bilmem katılır mısınız? Katılırım hocam. Mendelssohn'un bu konçertosu e, tarih içinde taşınıp e, çok çeşitli sanatçılar tarafından icra edilip çok çeşitli ülkelerde neredeyse dünyanın her yerinde çok farklı kültürlerden gelen insanlar tarafından e, tekrar canlandırılıp e, sergilenen bir eser. Bu açıdan da e, evrensel müziğin zamanın içinde de e, hareket edebilen değerleri taşıyabilen bir yapısı olduğunu düşünüyorum. Şimdi de bu e, konserin Erzurum'da gerçekleştirilmiş olması ülkemizin de çeşitli e, köşelerinde bu evrensel e, sanatın sergilenmesinin bir örneğini teşkil ediyor. E, programdan önce yani konserden önce e, Erzurumlu lise öğrencileri genç e, sanatçıyla bir söyleşide bulunacaklar. Onları izleyeceğiz. Bir de tekrar Profesör Walter Frisch'in bir sunuşu var. Profesör Walter Frisch yine New York'taki Bilkent Üniversitesi Empire State Ofisi'nden Erzurum'a bağlanacak. Oradaki öğrencilere hem Mendelssohn hakkında hem de bu eser hakkında bilgiler sunacak. Hatırlatalım, Profesör Frisch, Kolombiya Üniversitesi müzik bölümü profesörlerinden kendisi bir müzik tarihi uzmanı ve 19. yüzyıl dönem müziği kendisinin en önem verdiği ilgi alanı. Size keyifli bir program diliyoruz efendim. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Zoom. Thank you. We are so happy to have you in our school. All of us here are learning to play the violin. We know that you are one of the most successful and youngest violinists of the world. You are a world star and we would like to learn from your experiences and ask you some questions. Okay. The first question is mine. For you, what's the most interesting element in this concerto? It's a, a very typical music from a composer from early romantic period and there has a um, uh, very pure emotional lyrical part and at the same time um, 
He was very much inspired by the uh, violinist Joachim, who was uh, like child prodigy at that time. He was like 13 years boy, and he played so well. And and Mendes was very much impressed by, especially uh, his very high note E. And uh, yeah, that he's saying that he's uh, written a lot of high E there in this concerto. Mendelssohn is uh, among the early romantic composers. He's often considered the classical composer. He's of the same generation as uh, Robert Schumann and uh, Hector Berlioz, Frederick Chopin, um, Franz Liszt, this generation of early romantics. But of, of, among all of them, uh, Mendelssohn was the one that had the strictest classical training and the one who probably knew the most about the music of the past. His teacher was a German man named Zelter, and Zelter uh, in Berlin was very prominent in the revival of the music of Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, in the early 19th century. At that time, Bach was not very well known by the general public, particularly the big choral works and the big uh, cantatas and uh, Zelter, who was Mendelssohn's teacher, ran a sing, uh, singing academy or a, a choral society in Berlin where they performed these things. And, uh, a very, and Mendelssohn himself became involved. A very famous moment in Mendelssohn's life was in 1829 when he conducted the first modern performance of the St. Matthew Passion of Bach in Berlin. It's considered a, a watershed, a very important event in uh, music history, and certainly the music history of the 19th century, because, and Mendelssohn conducted this in 1829, so it brought Bach to the attention of the greater world, and Zelter helped prepare this as well. All of which is to say that Mendelssohn was really very much uh, trained in and aware of the music of Bach, but also the music of Handel and the music of Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. So uh, when Mendelssohn came to write this piece that we're looking at uh, today, his violin concerto in E minor, there were several things. One is he was uh, commissioned to do it, or it was written uh, for a virtuoso violinist of the day named David. That's one thing we know. And the other thing is that Mendelssohn was very aware of the concertos for violin that had been written before him by Mozart, uh, and particularly by Beethoven, the very famous Beethoven Violin Concerto. But Mendelssohn uh, went in a different direction. At the same time as being very aware of the past, he is very original. And something about his Violin Concerto in E minor, which was written in the 1840s, and he died in 1849 or 1847. He died in the late 1840s as a young man unfortunately. So this is a very mature work by Mendelssohn. He was already very famous and uh, very well regarded. So what he does with the form of the concerto is, as you might expect, he keeps the past very much there. He's very much aware of the past. So his concerto has three movements, like most concertos, sort of in the arrangement fast, slow, fast. That's one thing he does. The other thing is that he stays somewhat close to the traditional forms of the concerto, and he uses the concerto as an opportunity for displaying the abilities of the soloist to show off uh, technique and uh, great, great technical virtuosity. At the same time, he makes it a more romantic and more intimate work. One of the features of romanticism in music was uh, a desire to make music speak in some ways more personally, more intimately, um, in a more private way, to a public, but in a more private way. And uh, this is certainly something Mendelssohn does in so many of his beautiful works. If you think of his songs without words for piano, these beautiful piano pieces that are very short, very they don't try and be piano sonatas or very grand statements, although he could write those as well, but more intimate and more personal. So within, one of the great achievements of the concerto by Mendelssohn is that within the framework of the Romantic concerto, he makes it more intimate and more yeah, personal. And the way he does it is, uh, there are several things that he does. The tradition of the concerto before Mendelssohn 
even going back to the Baroque period, was to begin a concerto movement, the first movement, with a long orchestral passage called a ritornello. You present all the themes in a ritornello, or in the case of Beethoven, uh, in the what they call the exposition. And only then would the soloist come in, and some of the same material would be repeated. And then you'd go on in the classical concerto to a development section and a recapitulation in the sort of like the sonata form, or a combination of sonata form and concerto form. And then, near the end of the concerto, you would have a cadenza, a cadenza to show off the soloist's uh, ability, right near the end of the concerto. Well, in the first movement of this concerto, Mendelssohn rethinks the whole thing in a really original way. Rather than wait for the soloist to come in, the soloist comes in right away at the very beginning playing the theme. It's a wonderful uh, moment. So the soloist is right there at the opening, and this is what it sounds like. Right there, the soloist is present. And the other thing is, it's one of the most beautiful melodies of the whole period. Mendelssohn, romantic composers like to write beautiful, songful melodies. It's, it's almost like an aria, like somebody could be singing it. Some rather different from a kind of theme that Beethoven would write. So right there, the soloist is present and, and singing, if you will, playing on the violin this beautiful melody with the accompaniment of the orchestra. And that was quite revolutionary for the concerto at that time. And only then, after about a minute, does the orchestra come in with a the theme? So it's almost the reverse of what you would find in a concerto by Beethoven or Mozart. So then the orchestra comes in. The other thing that Mendelssohn does that is so beautiful and original in this piece is where to put the cadenza, the cadenza for soloists. The Mendelssohn Violin Concerto has only one cadenza, and it's in the first movement. Other violin concertos by composers have at least two cadenzas, but again, Mendelssohn is scaling it down, making it on a more intimate <coughs> scale. And he has the brilliant idea of rather than at the very end of the movement putting in this fast passage for solo violin, he integrates it more into the piece by putting it at, what, at the end of what we call the development section. So that rather than being sort of stuck on at the end of the piece, what we have here is uh, the orchestra comes to a pause, the cadenza begins. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs>
about this cadenza, traditionally, uh, com performers would improvise the cadenza. They would make it up. It was, an, uh, it was something they made up on the spot. Mendelssohn writes out this cadenza. He is very careful because he wants it to be integrated into the piece. He doesn't want the soloist to get too carried away because the soloist is part of the orchestra in a way, part of this uh, collective endeavor. So Mendelssohn writes this out. And then only when the cadenza is over does the recapitulation begin. Could you please demonstrate some of the typical violin virtuoso element in this concerto? Yes. Well, in the cadenza, of course, you have this uh, uh, trills. Uh, and also in the third movement, you have uh, this. this uh, staccato thing. If you're talking about uh, cadenza, if you have this um, arpeggio, arpeggio place in the end of the cadenza. I think of this idea of integration, of making the violinist a part of the whole structure rather than standing out uh, as something just a virtuoso. It's, it's very beautifully, seamlessly integrated. Again, one of the most important violin concertos of the 19th century. Sometimes people speak of the big three romantic violin concertos. Those would be the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, the Brahms Violin Concerto, and the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. Uh, each very different from one another, but uh, very important. And again, this sense of ro romantic intimacy and when I was playing you the earlier music, ambiguity, mystery, as well as the great clarity and um, sense of structure that Mendelssohn has. Really, really extraordinary, uh, extraordinary movement, extraordinary piece and an extraordinary composer. We know that you are performing on a 1715 Stradivarius. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that? What kind of a privilege is it? Well, it's a really a great um, thing that I can play with uh, such instrument. Um, this was played by um, Joachim, the great violinist, which uh, impressed Mendelssohn as well, and a great friend of uh, Brahms. So uh, he was playing on this violin, uh, which means uh, really a lot, because Joachim is one of the like father of violinists, and um, so um, it's a, a great honor for me as well, and um, yeah, very very special. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for coming and ask, answering our questions. Okay. Thank you. Could you please make a favor for us and play the first theme of the this of this concerto? Yeah. Bu programda Mendelssohn'un Mi Minor Keman Konçertosu'nu genç Japon sanatçı Sayaka Shoji 
E, Klaus Weizsäcker yönetimindeki Bilkent Senfoni Orkestrası ile birlikte seslendirdi. Gelecek programa kadar hepinize esenlikler diliyorum efendim.